Well, it has been one year since the unprecedented fish kill that ravaged Biscayne Bay caused by a dramatic loss of oxygen in the water. And scientists now know why. And the key to saving Biscayne Bay is to urgently clean our polluted canals and address the infrastructure problems that plague them. We take a closer look in tonight's Don't Trash Our Treasure. Biscayne Bay had never seen the likes of it. For five days, more than 27,000 fish and other marine animals would die. This is what we're losing. Suffocating due to a sudden lack of oxygen in pockets of the bay, primarily caused by the overload of deadly nutrients in the canals that flow into the watershed. What's become clear is that we have major pollution issues in our canal system. Right before the fish kill last summer, very high flows, higher than any time over the past 30 years, were being discharged from the Little River Canal into the bay. Troubling for scientists because today, there are still big problems in the Little River. The oxygen in the Little, little River has dropped down to around three milligrams per liter. Data from a research buoy from FIU's Institute of Environment, permanently positioned near the outfall of that canal since last summer, consistently shows low oxygen readings. It is the dirtiest of waterways. Enormous amounts of trash and debris regularly accumulate here, now prompting South Florida Water Management District to deploy a scavenger vessel to patrol the canal every week to scoop up all the garbage and muck on the surface. But what lies beneath is even more menacing. Ultimately, it comes down to the pollutants like phosphorus, right? That's our ultimate issue. Recent data from samples taken by Miami Waterkeeper during the first six weeks of summer show just how polluted this canal is. The orange spots indicate high fecal bacteria contamination. Four of the biggest points are on the Little River. And so we haven't fundamentally fixed the underlying problem. The biggest culprit, aging septic tanks that no longer work. According to Miami-Dade Water and Sewer, there are over 300 homes along the Little River currently on septic. Many of the septics along the Little River are more than 80 years old, back when climate change and sea level rise weren't part of our vernacular. Over the years, those septics have become dislodged, spewing all that waste and deadly nutrients into the groundwater that flows right back into the river, especially after a heavy rain. Over the next year, Miami-Dade Water and Sewer Department will install sewer laterals for 41 homes on septic along the Little River. And in the next two years, approximately 300 homes in the area on septic will be connected to sewer lines. Both projects partially funded by a state grant. We were honing in on the problem, but you know, it's, it can't be fast enough. According to the county report, of the 120,000 septic tanks in Miami-Dade, more than 57,000 are in the North Bay area. 56% of them are already failing, and 67% are compromised to sea level rise. And converting all of them to sewer won't come cheap, upwards of $4 billion. We have to pay for it, but look at what we have to lose. I mean, it's our environment, it's our property values, it's our water supply, and it's our economy, our tourism. We have no options. We have to get infrastructure put into place. There's also the urgent issue of modernizing all the storm drains in the county. Really make sure that we're doing things like cleaning the stormwater system so that um, the chemicals that are in the storm drain system and the plastic and other debris that are in the storm drain system are not getting into our waterways. A tall order that won't just take money, but years, as Biscayne Bay hangs at a perilous tipping point with the threat of another fish kill, a very real possibility. You know, fingers crossed. We're, we're in better shape, but, but we still have a long way to go. Fingers crossed. And while fixing our infrastructure will take time, there's something we can all do and must do right now. In April, the county passed the strongest fertilizer ordinance in the state, making it illegal to fertilize anywhere in Miami-Dade during the summer rainy months when all that fertilizer just washes off your lawn and sends all those dangerous nutrients into our aquifer and bay, killing the seagrass and feeding the algae and setting us up for another potential fish kill. Miami Waterkeeper has collaborated with other scientists to come up with an emergency reaction plan that will activate should the bay show signs of dangerous low oxygen. Again, we have a link for that on local10.com. Just click on the Don't Trash Our Treasure tab. And if you have a story that you think we should cover, send us a message at dtot at wplg.com.